So is it life or debt? Well, the state of things now, private health care seems to benefit a few and leave out many. Those without the ability to pay their debts may find themselves at the end of catastrophic consequences. And at the heart of it, medical debt is up for sale. Now, a new strike debt report shares some info about who's making bank off this debt. Well, in the report, quote, private health care enriches a few, insurance companies, private equity firms, ph pharmaceutical companies, debt collectors, and global investors, and at the expense of everyone else. Now, medical debt is a weapon of a class war because when patients can't afford to pay medical care, they are forced into debt, often with far-ranging and catastrophic consequences. Now, the self-proclaimed organization that is a bailout by the people for the people is Rolling Jubilee, and it raises money to wipe out people's medical debt who can't pay. With me to discuss this um, in RT's NY studio, Debt Liberator Ann Larson from Strike Debt, Camp Strike Debt Campaign. Hi there, Ann. Hi, nice to be here. Thank you. So Rolling Jubilee is buying up medical debt and forgiving it, I understand, even to the point of canceling out over a million, $11 million in debt. Can you explain to me what you guys are doing over there? Sure, absolutely. Well, Rolling Jubilee is a project of strike debt, and what we do is we purchase debt for pennies on the dollar, just like a debt collector would on the secondary market. But instead of collecting on that debt, we just erase it. I see. So, uh, you know, we've covered this issue here on RT before, and it's estimated that 70 million Americans, you know, they find themselves in a situation of some form of medical debt, you know, here or there. What are their rights concerning this debt? Well, well, first, the thing to understand is that medical debt is a huge and growing problem. It affects tens of millions of Americans. 62% um, of personal bankruptcies are linked to medical debt. So uh, people going into bankruptcy, people losing their homes, people's lives are being destroyed by medical debt. And this is a problem that is virtually unheard of in other countries around the world. Um, you know, when the Republicans in Congress a few years ago were talking about death panels, uh, they weren't talking about our for-profit health care industry, but they actually should have been. This is a, this is a corrupt market-based system that is really ruining people's lives. And, and we, don't, we don't need to live like this. I we can afford you. to pay for medical care for everyone. Well, that was a great point that you brought up, that other countries, you know, this is unique to the United States. Right. Can you tell me why that is? We have a profit-based health care system. It's as simple as that. You know, about a third of all the costs that we spend on health care are for marketing and for public relations, things like advertising. I mean, we just spend way, we spend much, much more than other countries do, and we get less. Um, there are, there's a lot of research out there that shows Americans are sicker and they die younger than people in, in other wealthy countries around the world. So really, we're paying more and we're getting less. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. I see. So how many people exactly has strike, the Strike Debt campaign helped so far? Well, our recent uh, medical debt purchase, we bought a million dollar portfolio of medical debt, all medical debt from the Midwest, Kentucky and Indiana. And so that million dollars of debt cost us about $21,000. So you can see that medical debt is sold very cheaply on the secondary market. Um, and so instead of collecting on that debt, we just abolished it. And it, it was the debt, the medical debt for a little over a thousand people. So those people will no longer have to pay that debt. So what we're doing is really helping people, number one. But the second thing is we're really, it's really a public education campaign. We're trying to let people know that this debt is for sale, that these, these banks, these lenders are profiting in human misery and sickness. So it's, it's about helping people, but it's also about public education. I see. So just building off that, can you tell me about any particular cases of people that this movement may have helped specifically? Mm -hmm. We send out letters to all the debtors whose debt we abolish. We send a certified letter letting them know what's happened, and we invite them to contact us voluntarily. We give them our information. Um, the letters for the 1,000 debtors whose debt we just abolished are going out this week. So we haven't heard from any of those folks yet, but we hope to. We're keeping our fingers crossed, fingers crossed and when we hear from them, uh, you'll be the first to know. I see. So you know, 70 million Americans are dealing with this issue. How do you pick and choose which people to help, which people not to help? Right, right. Uh, medical debt, all debt is sold in anonymous bundles. So we don't know whose debt we're buying before we buy it, which is another part of the industry. Uh, and that's the secondary debt market um, is trafficking in people's social security numbers, their addresses, all your personal information is being bought and sold on the secondary market. Um, after we purchase the debt, then we know who, who the debtors are and we can contact them. I see. So I want to talk to you briefly about the legal aspects of medical debt and if there are any laws in place to protect 
patients from that unavoidable mess that could happen to them, you know, if they're not able to pay these medical bills, i.e., other than bankruptcy, are we seeing any, any type of laws on the books that protect these people? You know, we're really not optimistic. There have been a few attempts uh, to limit, for example, the, uh, the impact that medical debt can have on your credit score and things like that. But what, what, what they're focusing on is paid medical debt. So if you pay your debt, then maybe there will be a law that's passed to protect your credit score. But many, many millions of people can't afford to pay their medical debt. So they're really, nobody's looking out for them. There, are, there is no law currently in, in discussion in Congress that would help most medical debtors. I see. So uh, do you feel like this is mostly a state's issue? Um, you know, are we seeing this tackled at all? Do you find that to be the case, that states are dealing with this individually? Well, uh, certainly you see states like Massachusetts. Um, you know, Massachusetts kind of pioneered the model of the, the mandated uh, health insurance purchase um, that now the Obamacare uh, program is trying to nationalize. But, you know, what's, what's actually true if you look at the data is that in Massachusetts, the implementation of this program did not reduce rates of medical debt or bankruptcies linked to medical debt. So we really feel like expanding a market-based system like is being attempted in places like Massachusetts really isn't the solution. Some of the, the doctors and healthcare practitioners that we've been working with on this project from Physicians for a National Health Program, they really believe that a single-payer system like they have in Europe and other countries around the world where healthcare is nationalized is really the best, at least the short-term solution, really to get everybody the coverage that they need so that people do not go into debt because they get sick. I see. So, you know, a lot certainly that Strike Debt is dealing with. Uh, do you have specific, does Strike Debt have specific goals, you know, maybe legislatively or even specific goals moving forward this year? Um, and how are you going to accomplish them if you have any? Well, I mean, I think we're going to support our allies. For example, I mentioned PNHP, who's working on and, and healthcare for the 99% and Occupy Group, that's working on uh, passing legislation to get single payer. But I think what Strike Debt is also interested in is, is like f is furthering the conversation and trying to ask, what are the options? Is a state-run health system or a private-run system are those the only two options, or are there other better ideas that we can come up with? Really, we feel like this is a failure of imagination. We need to be thinking collectively as a nation: How do we want to fund healthcare? How do we want to make sure that everybody um, can go to the doctor when they get sick. What are the best options? And we really want to help people. We want to have a public edu we want to start a public education campaign. But we also want to be able to spark imagination and be able to think differently about this problem. I see. Well, certainly, Anne, a lot of valuable information there. That was Ann Larson from Strike Debt Campaign. Thanks, Ann. Thanks. Thank you.